Good morning all. In the previous video, we were discussing the settlement in general and differential settlement in particular. While discussing the differential settlement, we had mentioned that one of the remedies that can be applied to a site is pre-consolidation of the site, which means whenever you expect a site to consolidate under the stress applied due to the extra load given by the building, you can do one thing you can actually bring in that settlement prior to the construction of the construction of the building which means let's assume that the building will induce a settlement of let's say 50 millimeter on the site so just before the building construction you can actually accelerate the process of settlement by inducing a settlement of let's say 45 millimeter which means while the building starts to construct there's already a settlement of 45 millimeter and the maximum settlement that you can expect due to the construction of that building is just five millimeter so that in a nutshell is a process of pre-consolidation just a crude form is what i've mentioned now pre-consolidation can be brought in by sand drains this is just one of the methods in practice sand drain is as the name suggests construction process in which you uh, insert drains in the form of circular sand pipes and above which you place a layer of sand blanket and above which you place a surcharge. Now the idea of construction of a sand drain pattern is to accelerate the consolidation settlement. Of course the settlement in clay will be usually due to the consolidation. So your intention is to bring in the settlement prior to the construction of the building for which you construct what we call as a sand drain it's usually in square or triangular pattern plan and above which you lay a sand blanket layer and above which you keep a surcharge load now sand drains work on the theory of consolidation and it acts as an accelerator to increase the rate of consolidation of saturated clays by increasing the permeability of the soil. But the magnitude of consolidation remains the same. This is quite important. What you do is you accelerate the process of consolidation and not the magnitude. Like we said as an example, you can have 50 millimeters of settlement due to a building. What you fundamentally do by a sand drain is that you accelerate the process and bring in 45 millimeters of settlement prior to the constru construction of the building. So the magnitude nonetheless will remain the same, 45 plus 5 millimeter, 50 millimeter. But you had accelerated the process by which you attained the 50 millimeter. So the time taken for that settlement or the attainment of consolidation is decreased. Now this picture would give you a better idea. To the left side you can see a soil strata, a clay strata, above which this drainage blanket, above which there's a pre-load and a surcharge. So uh, this is a case where you do not have sand drains. So when you do not have sand drain, the arrows marked here represent the way or the path taken by the water particle to reach the drainage because the clay is so impermeable that the water tends to go to the sand layer to get drained off the site. So any particle of water that is at this point, let's say, beneath the soil strata, will have to go all the way up to reach the sand blanket drain and to get expelled out. Whereas in this case, when you have the sand drains installed at some spacing, any particle of, of water will have an access to the sand drain here and it can easily escape out of the strata of clay. So you fundamentally do what you fundamentally do is to is, is that you accelerate the rate of consolidation by giving it an extra drainage path. Now sand drains is a typical example used for embankments for construction of roadways. They are installed by driving a casing through the layer of clay and making holes. Now these holes are backfilled with graded sand and the casing is then withdrawn. And with the typical diameter being 50 centimeters or 500 millimeter. 
and that is the diameter of a single drain. What you do is you install a number of drains either in square or triangle pattern in plan and it might look like this, right? You have four, four sand drains here. They are installed in square pattern at a spacing of S here and to the right side you can see a triangular pattern when the, 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 the sand drains are installed in triangular pattern at a spacing of S here. So uh, the, there's, there's something called a smear zone marked here. Smear zone is nothing but the zone within which this particular sand drain can absorb water and expel it out through the sand blanket. It is just the influence zone of a single sand drain. Now, the spacing between the sand drains is one important parameter that governs the design. Closer the spacing, lower will be the smear zone for each sand drain. And the typical values of R and S is marked here 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 meter, and S being 2 to 5 meter. And the depth might range from 3 to 35 meter, depending on, on, on the site and, and the load expected above the site, etc. So, a, a sand blanket is usually provided connecting the drains, like I said, at the ground level. It provides vertical and lateral drainage. So you have the sand drain here above which you have the sand blanket and further if you want to increase the rate of consolidation what you can do is you can add the surcharge load or an extra loading called a preloading may be provided on the sand blanket to accelerate the drainage. So it increases the pore water pressure and it squeezes the water out through the drains. That's the simple principle. Now, this is a sand drain where you install or uh, drive in a casing and then you fill it with graded soil, graded sand, etc. But off late, there's a practice called as a prefabricated vertical drain called PVD. Now, the cross section of which is which can be seen here. This is quite simple technique. Instead of sand drain, what you do is you give extra drainage path using fiber and plastic drainage uh, drainage unit. It looks like this in field. They come in rolls, just quite similar to the cello tape, but of a bigger size. And yeah, this figure would give you a better idea about how they are installed. They are installed using PVD installers and you have this circular rolls kept on this installer and they are kind of uh, sewed into the soil, just like tailoring. So once that method is completed, the site would look like this. So you have uh, prefabricated vertical drains installed at a, a, a specified spacing. Now this one is of a square spacing, I guess, pattern. and. So these PVDs or prefabricated vertical drains act as extra drainage paths and above which you have uh, in this figure you can see there's a layer of blanket of uh, aggregate of sand again to accelerate the, uh, the drainage. So uh, the idea is quite simple. Instead of a sand drain you give a prefabricated vertical drain and the same principle. What you give is you give extra drainage paths so that the water can get dissipated easily. Just like the consolidation cell that we discussed, you had the consolidation theory in which we were discussing the, uh, the consolidation odometer or consolidometer in which you have kept a sample of soil sandwiched between the two layers of porous stones. So that, let's assume that this is a clay layer, right? In this clay layer, let's assume that you have, uh, you have two water droplets, right? So the water droplet to the, to the left side will have two options to move out, one through the top surface and second to through the bottom surface if double drainage is permitted, right? So if double drainage is permitted, the longest path a water particle is expected to take is half the thickness of the soil sample, right? So if there's a double drainage, if there's a particle at the topmost layer, it can easily escape out. If there's a particle at the bottommost layer, it can easily escape out. So the longest path of drainage that a particle can expect is this. You can you can have half the thickness moved up or half the thickness moved down and you can exp you can you can expel out the water. Whereas 
if there's a single drainage path, the longest path is not equal to half of the thickness, but equal to the thickness of the sample, right? Double what you have seen in the previous example. So when there's a water particle at the bottom of the layer, it will have to move all the way up to reach the porous stone and to get drained out if there's no drainage permitted at the bottom. So that is the idea of a double drainage. Obviously, the second thing would take a longer time to dissipate the pore pressure and also to settle down. So the same magnitude of settlement will take almost double the time, just almost double the time, to, to get mobilized when you have just a single drainage allowed. Whereas where you have a double drainage allowed, you can attain the same magnitude at a reduced time. So that's a principle behind a prefabricated vertical drain or a sand drain. You allow the settlement to happen at a higher pace and accelerate the process to attain the same magnitude.